It's been almost two years since we first met Kyle Agrasso. He's now six years old and his health is fine, but the little boy's life suffered another upheaval. Last July, his family moved cross country when his father was reassigned to an air base in California. And then just three weeks later, Jeff was deployed to Iraq. With Kyle's father, his best friend and caddy gone overseas, Kyle just wasn't himself anymore. When daddy left, how difficult was it for him, Regina? I'll just say we had plenty and plenty of nights where it was crying himself to sleep. It was that tough. We moved all the way across the country, and then three weeks later, he was gone. When Jeff left, he definitely took a piece of Kyle with him. How sad were you when he left, Kyle? I was really sad because I was happy because he was serving our country, but I was sad because I wasn't going to play golf anymore. Did you cry? Yeah. Yeah. In an effort to lift Kyle's spirits, Regina tried to take him golfing, but quickly realized that her caddying skills were not up to par. The first time we go to the golf course, we're halfway to the golf course, and I realized that I never put his golf clubs in the car. So we had to go back and get his golf clubs, and Kyle has not let me or anyone else forget that. One time she forgot my gloves, and then she forgot my putter, and then I had to um, put with the four hybrid. What did she have to put with? A four hybrid. For Kyle, it wasn't just that mom had forgotten his clubs at home. She simply couldn't replace dad on the golf course. We got to about the third hole, and he hit a bad shot, and he just started crying and couldn't stop and talking about how he missed daddy. I'm crying, he's crying, and I just looked at him and I said, let's go home, and we left. If Kyle asked me to go golfing, we go golfing. I don't ask him anymore. How often does he ask you? Since Jeff's been gone, he's probably asked twice. Twice? We haven't even gotten through nine holes. No? Since it's, he's been gone. It's not the same? No, it's not. What you like is not just golf, but you like playing golf with your father. Yes. With Jeff in Iraq, Kyle jumps at the few chances he has to call or email his playing partner. They often make video phone calls to each other over the internet. Oh, yay, there he is. Say hi, Dad. What's up, buddy? <laughs> what are you doing? Nothing. And in case Jeff forgets, what? Kyle what likes to remind his dad exactly when their next tea What's time will be. 24 more days until 24 you come. 24 more days until you come back. And what are we gonna do the first day I'm back? Um, go golfing. All right, buddy. I love you. Love you too. Talk to you soon. Say bye. Bye. <laughs> How cool was that? Are you bummed? <laughs> Happily, though, Jeff's return date was moved up three weeks, a homecoming that Regina and Jeff decided to make a surprise for the kids. On February 2nd, Jeff arrived home from Iraq and saw his wife for the first time in more than six months. I can't believe I'm actually touching you. <laughs> Next stop, Kyle's school. Jeff waited in the front office while Kyle was called out of class. He walked down the hallway to find his dad. Hey. Want to go golfing? Oh. What do you think? Is that a good surprise? Yeah. yeah. Really good. Huh? Really good one. After the initial shock wore like off, Kyle went with mom and dad to help surprise his older sisters. An emotional and happy day for the entire family. All five Lagrassos together again. But for Kyle, it was even more special. After a quick stop at home, it was time to finally get back to golf. Look at that shot. Their first outing in more than six months with the caddy who'd been gone for far too long. 
it'll be fun this next couple of weeks and months, spending more time on the golf course and having fun together. Looks good. That's in. Good shot. All right, Frank, you win the award. You proved you can make the host cry. I, I've, I've watched it three times. I cried every time. Um, <laughs> let, let's start with, with Kyle's cancer. Um, in remission or an ongoing problem? What do the doctors no, say? He, it's completely in, in remission. He is cancer-free right now. That does not mean that it could not pop up some other time at some other place in his body. Right now, he's absolutely healthy. Matter of fact, he's, got a, he's get, getting a new eye because you grow. Your eyes oh, get yeah, bigger. You get see? bigger, duh. Uh, yeah. th no, I never thought of that before. And the other thing is, just for the record, the glasses that he wears now are not for his vision. His one eye is terrific. Those are to protect that eye. Understood. No offense to Bob Huber, his teacher, but are there plans to get him a top flight teacher so he can maximize his potential? Right now, they're letting the little boy grow up and enjoy life. He plays soccer, he nice. plays basketball, nice. he's playing again with his father and he's having a great time, but that family uh, does not want to turn a child into a prodigy. They That's want nice. to let him grow up nice and sweet. But he does have a great swing. Um, final note, I talked about the cancer, I talked about the golf, let me talk about you. Fair to say that of all the stories you've done, print, electronic, whatever, you've never had one that generated as much reaction from people walking down the street as this one? People in airports, people say, how about that kid? And this is two years after <laughs> I did the piece. And by the way, talk about crying. When he saw me again after two years, he ran and hugged me. Come on. Nobody else has ever done that for me in a story before right. either. It's a great tale. Nice kid. It's a great, great kid. Frank, thanks very much. Thank you. Finally tonight, a few words about failure and accomplishment. Some years ago, when Earl Warren was Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, he said that he always read the sports pages first because they recorded people's accomplishments, while the front page had nothing but man's failures. Well, I wonder what he'd read first today. These days, the sports pages are, for critics, what one might call a target-rich environment. Between Miguel Tejada's tearful admissions, Roger Clemens' bloated ego, Barry Bonds' endless court case, the perils of A-Fraud Rodriguez, and the clueless ineptitude of Bud Selig's stewardship, baseball's woes alone have soured even the most ardent fan. But as each of the accused has been forced to deal with his fate on the public stage, it's now worth asking just what we want or expect of those accused of taking performance enhancing drugs. Because no responses seem good enough even though they've all been tried. Miguel Tejada shed tears, Roger Clemens claimed innocence, Barry Bonds pled ignorance, Mark McGuire chose silence, and Alex Rodriguez owned up. Yet none seem to have satisfied either their fans or their critics all of which begs the question of where do we go from here? What is the right way to respond to great athletes who've cheated to get greater? How should we deal with heroes who have been less than heroic? Just how much of their record should we attribute to their talent and how much to their pharmacists? Given the state of the world, these aren't front page questions, not by a long shot, but they sure have changed the sports pages. And in the process, they've blurred those lines perhaps forever between failure and accomplishment. And that's our show for this evening. For all the good folks here at Real Sports, I'm Brian Gumbel. Thank you so very much for being with us, and good night. Join us again for Real Sports.